hello. <laughs> if you've been following my channel for a while, you probably know that I'm working on a little, not so little, <laughs> comic project called Sugar Serpent. And I post somewhat frequently about it over on Patreon. But I thought I would do a video publicly talking about the materials that I'm kind of experimenting with and kind of what I'm hoping to do with it in terms of production. If you want to know about the characters and the story and plot and how I'm outlining it and all that kind of stuff, that is all Patreon exclusive. But I want this comic to be manga or manga style, however you want to, however you want to say that. Um, I grew up, like, my introduction to comics was largely through manga, like Full Metal Alchemist and Fruits Basket. Um, those were like, that's what got me into comics. <laughs> and I've always kind of been a fan of manga, and I decided for Sugar Serpent, I want to like fully dive into that genre and just kind of challenge myself to, I don't know, rise to that challenge. So, show. And it's kind of also like a tribute to all the manga I grew up with. The other thing is, in terms of production, I really want it to be traditional as much as possible. Just because the more I make comics, the more I kind of find myself just enjoying the traditional process over digital. Like traditional inking and penciling, I just, I just feel so much happier and I love having the physical pages in my hands when I'm done. <laughs> It just, oh, it feels so real. So anyway, let's talk about pens first, pretty briefly. Um, I love inking. If you've been around on this channel or over on any of my social media, you know that <laughs> I love inking more than anything. And I think I know the tools I want to use. It's pretty much these three right here. Ah! Drop the most expensive one. I have this Brush Sign Pen Artist by Pentel. Um, this is like a tiny, tiny, tiny little brush nib. This is not refillable. It's not super expensive as a pen. It's not refillable though, which is a bummer. And then next up, we got these two. This one I've talked about a lot. This is the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. It's a good old staple in my inking arsenal. And uh, this one is refillable. You get a cartridge right there and you can refill it and just use it for pretty much ever. I've never worn out one of these. And you guys know how much inking I do. I've never worn out the bristles on a Pentel pocket brush pen. Now, <laughs> last but not least, we have this guy. This is the newest addition to my uh, inking box. And this is a Kurataki. I'll put the name up on the screen. It's, I don't remember what it's technically called, but... Um, this is a new one. It's phenomenal. It has, I feel like, a slightly more, um, a better control over the bristles. I don't know how to explain it. I just feel like this is a little bit more predictable than the Pentel. I feel like the Pentel sometimes could be just a little bit blobby. And it has a metal uh, casing, so it weighs a bit, which I like. Um, I'm not like strictly keeping to the brush pens. I'll, I will use technical pens if I need to. But that's kind of the look that I'm going for. And here's some work that I've done recently, kind of getting in some practice with the brush pens. So this is Meg from Sugar Serpent. And we got Lawrence. Obviously these are very large illustrations compared to how I would draw um, comic panels. They would not be quite this large, so the detail wouldn't be quite to this level, potentially, but um, yeah, this is what I've been experimenting with. Okay, so at this point in the video, I gave a super long-winded explanation about the paper, so I cut that out, but essentially, um, I've already been trying out this first larger size of deleter paper, and now I'm trying out the smaller size, and then I got... Uh, this other brand, this other brand, the one on the right there, is a lot thinner, but I, I kind of lean towards the heavier weight of the deleter paper, my original draft. But yes, as you heard, I am making the effort to create my first ever manga. I kind of like calling it my first manga because it implies I might be able to do this again someday <laughs> with another story, maybe. <laughs> it's hard to wrap my brain around that, like just juggling 
my main comic right now, Days and Eleanor, which is a web comic, and then working on Sugar Serpent. The idea of future projects is like I'm not even I'm not even thinking about that. Um, but yes, I am creating this manga. I'm super excited about it. Um, I'm so excited about it for many reasons. One of the reasons I'm excited is I kind of get to take everything I've learned from Dazer and Eleanor and like apply it and then learn more stuff on top of that. Like it's my first time starting a second project, you know, it's just, it's going to be weird. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to be totally new. There's still a lot that I have to learn, but I'm not going to be totally new this time around. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm also excited that it's going to be black and white. Coloring is not my favorite thing, and I don't think I'm as good at coloring as I can be with inking. Like, inking just feels like my comfort zone. It feels like my strength. Um, and so the idea of doing a comic that relies way more heavily on ink rather than color, um, that just sounds so exciting to me. It sounds so much more like what I ought, quote unquote, ought to be doing. <laughs> Dazer and Eleanor was black and white at first, and there's part of me that misses that, but I just feel like for Dazer and Eleanor, um, I do think the color adds to the comic. I think it's a good thing, and I'm going to keep doing it. Um, I don't know. I'm just excited to, for Sugar Serpent to show me what I can do with ink and just, just black and white. So the drawings that you see in this video uh, were based off of several different references that I just I found from the internet um, and my main goal was just to sort of start familiarizing myself with Japanese clothing not in any super specific academic way um, but just kind of getting an idea of the fabric how it folds and moves how it you know ties or wraps around or whatever um, it's just so different from <laughs> the cowboy wild west stuff that i've been drawing um just all of it moves differently everything about it is different um and then also because i'm going to do it in black and white i had to think a lot more carefully about how i'm going to show tones shading weight texture pattern all of that so this this was not meant to be like a super deep dive into the intricacies of japanese clothing <laughs> This was more just a, like, let's see, let's see what I'm dealing with here. Um, Sugar Serpent is not technically set in Japan, but it, like, kind of is. <laughs> I, it's not going to be, like, a historical fiction. It doesn't need, quote-unquote, need to be realistic. But I want, because I'm basing the world kind of in Japanese culture as opposed to American. Um, I just have a lot of groundwork to do to familiarize myself with it, to immerse myself in it. And uh, yeah, I'm not concerned about this comic being like historically uh, authentic per se, but I would like the world to have the depth of uh, the depth that you get from being well informed and being well researched, if that makes sense. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Um, okay, so here I am moved on to the other paper. I did actually really like both papers. This Kulox paper is big, so I don't know how that would work with my scanner. It's a little bit too big, um, but it was so smooth and fun to ink on. The, the thinness of it did not bother me. Um, you can probably see that the ink has some shininess to it, which is probably the ink more than the paper. But I didn't notice any uh, major buckling or warping or anything like that when I applied like bolder blacks. So both papers I think were good. I'm leaning towards the smaller deleter paper just for the ease of scanning. Um, although I do like just the, the feeling of inking on this bigger paper it just kind of feels cool. 
This was such a fun evening, and I kind of forget sometimes how fun it can be to work from reference because it kind of just gives your brain a little bit of a break or like some different problems to solve instead of trying to come up with a pose or a, you know, an image on your own. You already have it there in front of you and you're just interpreting it. And I, I forget how fun that is. And I do feel really proud of the drawings. I love the way they came out. Um, I feel like it's the right level of detail that I could see myself putting in to a comic. And I feel like the clothing patterns and textures that I got, I feel like they're good. I feel like this was a solid test in terms of style. So in that way, obviously, it's a big success. Going forward, some things that I want to kind of continue to work on is clothing. I still want to work on that some more. Uh, but then also kind of just more like environment, like different kinds of houses and farms and stuff. A lot of the comic is going to be kind of set in like a rural area, um, probably a lot in the mountains is what I'm kind of envision envisioning. Um, so honestly, I feel like I need to just do a bunch of studies of like environments and landscapes and architecture and kind of get better at the world building part of it. I can, I can BS my way through a lot of Western uh, environments, landscapes and buildings, but I, not with Japanese, I do not have the mental library to uh, <laughs> fool anybody into thinking I know what I'm doing. So um, yeah, and then after studying these different poses and costumes, I'm kind of rethinking some character design stuff. Like this, just these studies gave me a deeper insight into how I might design a Japanese inspired world and all the characters that live in that world. So going forward, environments, architecture, and possibly some character redesigns. That's, that's what I want to work on next. Let me know what uh, you guys would be interested in seeing me work on. I'm going to keep the story kind of to myself, but in terms of art, let me know what you guys would like to see. Okay, so here we go. Here's my two test pages of the two, the deleter paper and the kulaks, kulaks, I don't know, paper. <laughs> um, I really liked both of them. And I think both sets of studies came out pretty good. I think the ink looks good on both. This paper does have the problem of being larger than my scanner. Although this, what you could call the active area, this square right here, that does fit. So potentially I can make this work. And we have this, which would uh, fit on my scanner perfectly. I could just scan it, no big deal. This, the pen glides so much, so smoothly over this compared to even like smooth Bristol paper. It's really, really fun. If you are a fan of brush pens and you've never gotten this kind of paper, I recommend trying it out. It's so smooth. So, so smooth. I think, think we can call it a night. <laughs> Seeing as how it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> um, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to learn more about the story that I'm working on, Again, you can head over to Patreon, sign up for a dollar, and you can see all the posts I've had, I've made so far uh, about Sugar Serpent and the story. Um, none of these drawings are actual characters. These are just studies. Um, practicing my uh, Japanese clothing, practicing my black and white patterns and textures, and practicing with my tools. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching once again. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, evening, weekend, whatever, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!